Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. Alright guys, it's going to be another fun painting for my beginner painters, so grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on mine, I went over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker for those of you that are going to pause the video and draw what you see at home. If you're utilizing the traceable, I um, recommend that you don't uh, go over it with the black Sharpie marker and just jump right into painting. So we are going to start, we're going to take this in kind of small sections as we work our way around the canvas. So I am starting with that middle flat brush and light blue. And that is white with a tiny amount of blue in there um, to make it that light blue. And your shade may be a little lighter or darker than mine. Totally okay. Now we're going to be filling in that sky and then we'll do a few other places where the blue and then we'll go darker. Um, but like I said, we're just going to take this section by section. And this is a good painting for my beginner painters. You're going to work on smaller brush strokes um, using the smaller brushes and just kind of um, going from one segment and doing a little bit of shading and then moving into the another, uh, another segment. So just take it, take your time and just kind of have fun with this. Now, as you're painting the background, if you are on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry the color around the sides. And as always with student grade paint, I do recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker. So we're still taking that light blue and we're going to put it into the overalls for our farmer up here, filling all that space in. And because I am using student grade paint, you are able to see that black Sharpie uh, marker um, through the paint. So we will be putting two layers of paint on a few places here. So now I'm made to a medium blue and that's just one or two shades darker than the blue you were using. And I want you to just observe where I place it um, and the general shape that I make and try to mimic that on your canvas. Now do remember to breathe, it's not good to hold your breath, so just relax and enjoy the process. Now we're making a, um, so now we're going to make a grayish blue, so I want you to just grab a little bit of black, a tiny amount of pigment will go a long way, and you just mix it into that medium blue that you were using. There you go, and then we're doing a little bit of blending, so you kind of place that color in there, and if you need to, you can wipe the brush off and go back with light pressure, or just kind of go in with that light pressure to kind of squish this color into the base. Again, remember to breathe and relax. You're doing a great job. Now, as you move through this painting, you're more than welcome to reference the original painting. Um, whichever painting you are referencing, uh, you're just strengthening your power of observation. So here you can see we went into the white. We're putting some highlights on there directly into that base. And this is called wet on wet blending. Um, basically you're squishing your new color into your base color and we're going to build on this concept as we go through the painting. And again for my beginner and first time painters just take it slow. You're building your skills and you're building your muscle memory. So now we're going to move into a blue and black mixture and we're going to fill in that coat and then we'll do a little bit on the farmer's wife. And again, as I apply this, you're going to notice you can see all the brush strokes, you can see some of the transparency. So depending on what type of paint you have at home, some of you will need, can be able to do this in one coat um, and have nice coverage. Some of you may need to do two layers on this. So adjust for whatever you need based on the supplies you have at home. All right, and just filling up both sides of that jacket. And then just like we did for the overalls, um, we will be going in with some black and some um, a few different colors to get that shading happening. All right, and you will notice that sometimes I hold the brush at a 45 degree angle. That allows me to apply the paint a little bit thicker um, instead of just using the ends of the bristles to apply the paint. So as you're doing this, try um, holding your brush at those different angles and just see what works for you. That really is the biggest thing about painting is getting comfortable with your tools and comfortable with your process of mixing. All right, so now we're going to do go back to that medium grayish blue, real similar to what we were using um, on the overalls at the end. And we're going to apply this directly on top of the blue-black mixture. And again, just kind of quick, choppy little brush strokes. I want you to just observe the general place that I put this 
and mimic it on your canvas. And same if you're referencing uh, the original painting, just observe what you see and to the best of your ability, um, apply it to your painting. That's really what the process of painting is about. You're um, just strengthening your own skills. And now I'm going in with some black, intensifying those shadows. And if you need to, you can switch between your brushes. Right now I did move down to that small pointy brush. And no matter what brush you're using, play with the pressure. Light pressure will keep kind of skinnier lines. More pressure um, makes a little bit wider lines. And as you're blending, it is okay to wipe off any excess paint um, on the paper towel and then go back and blend with a little bit of a cleaner brush. In your beginning stages of painting, you're figuring out so much of how you work and what you enjoy. So um, that's why I encourage that you try a bunch of different things and find what works for you. All right, so going back to that blue and black combo, we're gonna work over on the farmer's wife, her dress, um, and still using that small pointy brush for that. And again, if you are on that stretched canvas, just carry these colors around the sides when you reach the edge of the canvas. You are also more than welcome to switch out colors. If you want to do different colors for this, go right ahead. And please send me pictures of whatever you paint, um, just because I like seeing those. All right, so this is a good place to pause the video, take a progress photo, and we're going to move into the skin or into the background. So we're going to use a light uh, raw sienna, and then we're going to add a touch of yellow to it. Again, this is for the house. It was kind of a, a pale yellow, but it's also because it's in the background, um, just making it a little bit more muted. So that top part has a little bit more yellow and then we'll go a little bit more gray, adding a touch of black when we get into the bottom part of the house. Again, full permission to change colors as needed. All right, and then using that same color a little bit on the bottom. There we go. And we will be doing some wet on wet blending for this. So take this video at your own pace and just try to do each section. And then if you need to put it away, come back and you can do more. All right, so now we're going for that grayish spot. So that same color you were just using, add a tiny, tiny amount of black paint to it to get to this grayish, yellowish brown color. And we're going on the bottom of the house. And then you saw where there was a bit of a shadow for uh, the roof. Again, just strengthening your power of observation as you paint this. All right, and again, doing that wet on wet blending, just light pressure. And you've seen a few times where I've wiped off the excess paint on my paper towel and then go back and blend. You can even use your fingers to blend. That's a real tactile and kind of fun method to do. Now, as you're doing any of this, if you apply a color and then realize that, hey, it's not dark enough or it's not blending the way I need it to, um, go ahead and adjust because you're blending into an already wet surface. It does change the color. So sometimes you have to use maybe a bit more of your black pigment to go darker because it's going to be diffused based on what you're blending it into. Um, if that seemed a bit confusing, just kind of trust your instincts and keep painting. The more that you do it, the more natural um, you'll know what to do and your instincts will kind of pick up. All right, so you saw that we put the darker gray in those windows. And then we're going to add a touch of yellow to it and those windows back there. Yeah, they were a little bit, a uh, little bit different color and a little more intense. Again, if you end up using a different color, totally okay. And as you get into these smaller spaces, if you find that your brush is kind of shaky, that does mean that you're holding your breath. All right. So we went back to that original mixture for the base that uh, light raw sienna with a touch of yellow and there was enough on my plate to just go back and grab it and fill in a few of the outlines on the windows and a few spaces that I had missed uh, where the canvas was still showing through. And then I wanted a little more shadow in the windows so just like the other areas grabbed a little touch of that black and blended it into the wet paint. All right and then that red barn I went uh, directly with that red still using that pointy brush and then just like the other areas, we're going to grab a touch of that black and give a little bit of a shadow underneath that roof line. Now, as you are building your skills, we're just going in with tighter brush strokes and smaller spaces that we're making our value scale, our dark shadow and kind of our mid-tone. And as you get more and more into painting, you'll work on the range of your value scale. But that will come later. Just keep focusing on where you're at right now. 
and then going back to the dark gray and that was black with a little bit of white so it's not that pure black but dark gray for the roof um, on the barn and on the house again remember to breathe as you get into these smaller spaces and exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will alleviate some shakiness you might have um, as you're applying the paint and another thing is hopefully that you are getting so lost in the process of the painting that you just kind of forget about the rest of the world for a little bit that's kind of the reason to paint all right so grabbing that white putting some highlights on the roof and then i wiped the brush off and then blending that into that base color you're getting great practice with wet on wet blending today and this is a skill that will carry through into any and all of your other paintings all right, and a little bit of that direct black for the roof line um, on the barn it was kind of the back end of the roof and then on the house um, kind of the a-frame part of that roof and notice as we're doing these small lines that I do kind of put my pinky out study that on the canvas you can rest your forearm against the edge of the table if you need to turn the canvas upside down because it makes it easier or sideways adjust for what you need all right, so now we're going into the light raw sienna that is white with raw sienna and we're going to do this skin tone and we are going to do this twice um, and this is because i'm using student grade paint you'll be able to see those lines coming through and i want you to take notice that when we do the second layer how much more opaque and in my opinion how much better it looks so don't be afraid to layer your acrylic paint and adjust for what you need if you are using nicer paint you don't have to do this second uh, the second layer that we will be doing later on you can skip that we will do the same uh, kind of set of shading on both layers just for good practice and at any point if you do have to mix your color two or three times don't stress about getting the exact same shade with this wet on wet blending um, we have a lot of variety so now I'm grabbing that direct raw sienna again I want you to just observe where I place it and then I'm going to go back and wipe the brush off and then with light pressure blend it into that base paint again just getting good practice and brush control and you're learning a lot about how to mix your colors each time you mix it your brain's taking in that information um, and kind of storing it away so when you mix it again it's a little bit easier and then when you mix it again a little bit easier um, hopefully you are understanding that practice is the best way for you to get more comfortable with painting so again just kind of blending in sometimes I use little dots sometimes it's light pressure uh, you can even hold your brush at that 45 degree angle that I've talked about before um, for a little bit of a smoother finish um, just keep finding what works for you all right now grabbing a little bit of white we're gonna put a highlight on there and it, it's a little hard to see so that highlight is kind of going on the left hand side of the face the left hand side of the neck and that jawline when we do the second layer for the skin tone um, it'll be a little bit more obvious uh, when we get to that all right so now we're going to do her hair and that's going to be raw sienna and yellow kind of a warm um, uh, dirty blonde hair and again if you want to change colors go right ahead uh, this will also get a second layer because you can tell how transparent it is on this one and then grabbing that raw sienna at the base of her hair closer to her neck giving a little bit of a shadow right on top of that all right you guys are doing a great job it's coming along nicely oh and the farmer needs hair too and that is just the direct raw sienna he'll get a second layer as well and for those lips that's going to be raw sienna with a tiny amount of red just to kind of warm them up a uh, little bit of red goes a long way so if you make your color and it's a little much um, just make a new pile and you can adjust if it's too dark you can add a little bit of white to it so again adjust for what you need all right oh and I totally forgot about the hand so we're going back with that light raw sienna white plus raw sienna putting the base in there and then going in with raw sienna for the shadows for the finger lines and the shadow behind the hand and then wipe that brush off and just kind of blend that into uh, that base and the white is going on the left hand side of the hand those knuckles and the top part of the hand all right so a good place for pause the video take your progress photo and then grab a big chunk of that burnt sienna uh, again you can tell how transparent this is so i'll be utilizing that um, 45 degree of the angle to apply it and then we'll be doing a little bit of shading into this as well 
And I like that raw sienna. It's kind of a reddish brown. It's a real pretty, pretty brown color. All right, doing good. Again, don't be afraid to apply your paint a little bit thicker and just play with it. Your brain's taking in so much information right now. All right, and then now we're gonna grab that raw sienna. I'm gonna put it on there kind of thick on the left-hand side, because again, that's where the light is coming from. And then here you can see where I am holding that 45 degree angle and kind of blending that raw sienna into the burnt sienna. Then we're gonna do a mixture of burnt sienna and black, going a little bit darker. And I didn't want just the direct black because that was pretty strong. Here we go. And then going on the right-hand side of her dress and kind of at the waistline, giving a hint that we have a shadow. And the shadow also indicates that she is standing uh, behind her husband, behind the farmer. And as I was doing this, I realized it wasn't dark enough. So I will be going in with the direct black in a moment. Here we go. And just on the tightest part, right underneath where his elbow would be and closest to where his arm, his body kind of overlaps her body. We're getting that in there. Again, if you uh, need a second layer on this, I don't do this in the video, but if you need a second layer, go ahead and just do exactly the same thing after your paint has dried. All right, now moving into that foliage, we're just gonna kind of glob that green on there pretty thick, and then we'll put a little highlight of some yellow. And we have foliage on the left-hand side of the house, and there's also gonna be some foliage on that left-hand side um, from where the barn is. And at this point, there actually should only be two spaces left that are do not have paint on them. All right, so now we're grabbing that yellow. Just observe where I threw it on there kind of thick. You can throw a little bit of white in there if you want, and then wipe that brush off and just smush that color into that base green. And again, just notice how it makes a different shade and a different uh, kind of color compared to what was on there to begin with. And just wiped off, I think I dropped some water on there, so wiping it off with the paper towel, making the little adjustments as needed. And at any point, feel free to pause that video and take your progress photo. All right, and now we're moving into the last section. We're using white for his shirt. And then uh, building on the same skills, we'll put a little bit of light gray in there for some shading. Oh, and also her collar, almost forgot about that. There we go. All right, and now a little bit of light gray next. And even with the pointy brush, you can um, use that kind of 45 degree angle to apply your paint or smooth stuff out. So as you're making your light gray, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black will go a long way to make your gray. And again, if you maybe make it too light, and you need to add a little bit more, adjust what you need to um, after you've made a few brush uh, marks on your canvas to see if it works. And same with her collar, the back of her collar gets a little bit of a shadow. And hopefully this is showing up on your screen. All right, now we're moving back into the skin tone, going back to the white raw sienna mixture and just kind of going right on top of everything. And again, notice how much thicker, how much more opaque it looks. I think it looks better. Um, and then we're gonna do the exact same blending. So now grabbing that raw sienna, putting it in the same spot as before underneath the chin where the eye sockets would be and kind of the T-zone for the nose and then even a little bit on the ears. And then wipe that brush off or grab a new one and just kind of with that light pressure blend it into the base. We will be doing the same thing with white paint next on the opposite side of the face. If it's hard to kind of see what this is, um, get out of your chair and look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And that's more of the normal viewing point um, for artwork. And it looks a little bit better from that distance. So here you can see we went in with the white, added it to the left hand side of the face, and then wiped that brush off and then blended it into the base color. You guys are doing an excellent job. I'm really proud of you. And then same thing for the lips, that raw sienna and red. If you added a little touch of white to yours in the first step, go ahead and do the same thing. And when we do the outlines, um, that will kind of def def uh, define the face and the lips a little bit more. All right, doing a great job. And I did forget the hand again, so there we go. Going back down to do the hand. Same thing, that white and raw sienna mixture. 
load it on there, and then grab the raw sienna for the highlights, wipe the brush off, blend it in, clean the brush, grab the white paint, and on the opposite side, you'll put the highlight, wipe the brush off, and then blend it in. Hopefully you guys are getting really, really comfortable um, with the wet on wet blending after today's painting and your smaller controlled brush strokes. So I went back and made that medium gray to outline that window door frame in the back. Now we're gonna grab the pure white and get that top window definition. We're gonna outline it and then do um, some of the lines on the inside of the window. Again, put your pinky out, use that as a steady pivot point, rest your forearm against the edge of the table, turn your painting sideways or upside down, whatever you need to be able to make um, these marks and these lines. And again, pause the video at any time that you need, do what you need to do to your painting, and then continue on. And with that white, putting uh, that last little bit of the railing on, and anything else around the frame of the house, little structure of the porch. And I did, I did simplify this from the original, so if you see something in the original painting that I didn't add, go right ahead and add it. All right, and then she did have a brooch, so we're using that raw sienna and burnt sienna mixture. Put a little circle right there where her collar is, and then now we're using the raw sienna and yellow going back to her hair. We're going to fill that in, and then we'll put a little bit of raw sienna on the base. Here we go. Here's the raw sienna um, on the base of her hair closer to her neck, and then we'll be using that raw sienna for the hair on the farmer, on her husband. There we go. Getting it on both sides. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. I want you to fully let this dry before you move on to the next step. And the next step is the black outline. So I'm using that small pointy brush, black paint. You can add a little bit of water to your black paint and that will elongate or give you a little more fluid paint to work with. If your paint's already really runny um, and already pretty fluid, do not add water to it, just use it directly. And I want you to play with the pressure. Light pressure will create the skinnier lines, more pressure a little bit wider. And again, notice that every couple of brush strokes, I am going back and grabbing more black paint. You wanna get in that habit um, so that way you're actually applying paint to the canvas. And you can reference the traceable for the lines. You don't have to add all of them. You can add some of them. You can add none of them. You can change colors whatever you feel like doing. But these lines, especially for my beginner painters, just kind of cleans up the edges a little bit, defines your composition. When you really get further into your painting exploration, um, you will not be doing these outlines in some of your realistic paintings. You will be using your value scale and your shading. But for these beginning steps, uh, like I said, it just kind of helps solidify your composition uh, a little bit easier. It makes it, makes it look kind of nice. So again, your call, how much or how little you do. These videos are merely a guideline to help um, make painting not so scary. But trust your instincts, take your paintings to where you want to go, and just keep finding your creative outlets in your world. Makes for happier, more relaxed people, the more creative they actually are. And share this with your community. You know, you're not the only one that has stresses that you want to get rid of or avoid or relax from. You know, if you find it relaxing, maybe some other people in your community might find the process of painting relaxing as well. All right, so now we're going to move into light gray, the important uh, pitchfork here that the farmer is holding. So I actually, again, rotate your canvas as needed, but start with the base for what he's holding in his hand. And I used a decent amount of pressure. And then at the end of that base or in, end of that line, I put a little circle. And then we'll do the first pitchfork. That's a little bit of a skinnier line. And then a second one, it's gonna be almost like a curve or almost a U shape. Sorry about the shaking of the video there. There we go. And then do your other side. Again, if you need to turn this canvas sideways to get to that, to make it easier, do what you need to, to adjust this. Now we're grabbing the white. And again, on the left-hand side, of the lines you just made, we're gonna put that white and that's that highlight. All right, in one last place, you're gonna put the white, a little zigzag design on her dress. And then that will take us into the conclusion of today's painting. So great job, you guys. Oh, a few little highlights on the glasses, but I'm really proud of you for painting. And until next time, cheers. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.